Monster Hunter is a game about defeating monsters. That's it. It's that simple, but it's a lot of fun. However, while most people will try to tell you how to have fun by achieving the biggest numbers possible in order to empty a monster's HP extremely fast, I, being a new player, realize how terribly impractical that is for people like me. And I'm here today to show you how to effectively get the job done while also not needing to have an iframe dodge success rate equivalent to the meta affinity rate. Today, we're looking at the longsword because it's a weapon everyone is assigned to at the game's start. And also, if you couldn't tell by my character's hair, I love anime. The longsword is a melee weapon with great reach at the expense of speed and buildup, but be careful as it's easy to confuse with the greatsword because the longsword is pretty great and the greatsword has a pretty long wind-up time. Either way, the longsword is a sharp weapon which means it wants to be slicing off any part of the monster that it can. I really don't understand why so many people complain about where to hit. Tails are typically the only thing you can cut and you can only do that with sharp things and heads are the thing to hit for knockouts with flat weapons and the only melee weapon that doesn't want to be either of those is the hunting horn which attacks between the two so the rest of the party is in range. I don't know, I haven't tried hunting horn yet. At the core of longsword's kit is this katana looking sword meter on your HUD. This is your spirit gate which has both an inner and outer meter. In order to keep clarity, I'm going to call the outer one spirit gauge level and the inner one inner focus. Basically, the spirit gauge has four levels ranging from zero to three, and the current level is indicated by that outer meter. If you can't see it, you're at level zero. But the border can be white for level one, indicating you're still feeling kind of peaceful, yellow for level two is a warning to the monster that you're dangerous, and red for level three to indicate that you're out for blood. This color will also show up on your sword itself, but if you're able to track it by that method, it means your sword isn't swinging fast enough. The inner focus gauge is filled when you land hits and really get into the zone. It fills a lot from overhead slash, which is the only reason to use that move as it's really slow compared to a basic thrust attack, which is much better for comboing into the good stuff. You can then expend your inner focus to perform a spirit combo with the shoulder button, which has three different moves, the third of which has three hits. The fourth combo, or more specifically sixth hit, is spirit round slash, which is the move that really breaks that inner focus as you stand right under the monster and miss half the time. However, if you do manage to land round slash, it'll raise your spirit gauge by one level. You can use less inner focus if you're willing to use more outer focus and push two face buttons at the same time and use fade slash, a move that can combo into jumping slash and then later levels of the spirit combo. You can also swing your sword midair, that's pretty cool. Basics aside, what really makes the longsword shine is the amount of no you moves it has. The easiest one to use but hardest one to control is foresight slash, which can only be comboed into and throws the player both back and forward. However, if you manage to both get hit in your iframe window and land the subsequent counter attack, you will feel really good about yourself and get a full gauge of inner focus. But why have extra steps in between a counter and a level of deadly spirit gauge? By comboing out of an attack with shoulder and B, you can anime sheath your weapon, which means the hurt is about to come down on someone and it's now up to you to determine if it's gonna be you or the monster. By pressing X out of this you can do lie slash, a one-two hit that if connects will begin gradually filling your inner focus. But if you're good at timing things you can instead hold your special sheath until the moment you get attacked, pressing shoulder and doing lie spirit slash, a counter which again only works right if both you get hit and land the counter attack. But it's much easier since it's fully stationary until the actual attack. Should you succeed with both your reward is a level of spirit gauge. This is the fastest way to get levels and is about as safe as trying to perform a full spirit combo over the course of a full four seconds right next to the thing you're mutually trying to kill, so make sure to use it properly before the level expires. And actually make sure to do something with your special sheath instead of just sitting there not doing any DPS, as if you wait too long, it will lose its specialness and become a regular sheath. But on the note of those spirit gauge levels, the way to use them properly is with wire bug moves. The first one you get is Soaring Kick, which leads into Plunging Thrust, which is actually a move you'll never use, as it launches you into the air and if you land on the monster, you'll drive your sword into it and waste a wire bug charging inner focus when the last slash could do it for free. Instead, when you hit the monster, pressing the shoulder attack button will initiate Spirit Helmbreaker, throwing you much higher and bringing down ultimate pain for both the monster and you as you're more than likely to miss more than half of these. And whether you hit or not, it consumes one of those hard-earned spirit gauge levels. The second move you can use is Serene Pose, which is the easiest among the counters to use with the caveat that it consumes two wire bugs and doesn't give them back for a long time, eats a level of spirit gauge instead of granting one, and has absolutely no range on the returning hit. Though like Helmbreaker, it does it decently hard if it consumes a red level of spirit gauge. Lastly in the kit are the switch skills, but in my case they're more like the ditch skills. Draw double slash is a flashier move to use than normal step slash and comes with super armor, but it takes longer to get to the actual combo DPS. Not because it has a longer animation, but because I have to open up a menu and manually set my hunter to this. The second switch skill changes the last two parts of the spirit combo into dividing slash and spirit reckoning. Reckoning is basically a vertical spin attack where round slash is horizontal. The third switch skill changes soaring kick into silkbind secure slash, which is a ground level mobile attack that raises the spirit gauge by one level if you land it. However, the cost of equipping it is giving up Helmbreaker, so the only way to expend your precious spirit levels on damage is with serene pose, which you better hope lands because with the amount of time it takes wire bugs to recharge and the fact that serene pose demands two of them means you basically only have one shot. Aside from that, the last part of the kit to consider is the equipment you bring and the skills it enables. Since every weapon wants one of those flashy number increasing skills like critical boost, weakness exploit, and attack boost, I'm instead going to ignore those and focus on the things that actually affect how you play longsword. For starters, you're going to want all three levels of quick sheath. This allows you to do special sheath almost immediately, which is great for setting up the lie spirit slash counter before you get hit instead of taking enough time to do so to plan your funeral after the hit you're about to take kills you. Another good pick is punishing draw, which increases the damage from 
from an unsheathing attack and deals stun damage, which is a natural good pick for anyone using Monster Hunter as an impromptu anime swordsman cosplay simulator due to the frequency of stylized sheaths. Additionally, I'd recommend the skill of Veda Extender. Longsword is the default weapon in the game, and for new players, this allows you to completely dodge an attack instead of having to iframe it and get back to the action faster. Don't let anyone tell you this is a bad strategy because the only ways to lose are to time out or for the team to collectively faint three times, the first of which never happens and the second of which is directly avoided by using this strategy. A Vedic Center also puts you further from the monster faster so you can heal up with potions more safely. Because trust me when I say it doesn't matter who the first two were, you do not want to be the third person to faint. On a more positive note though, a Vedic Center also increases the distance of your aerial dodge after a wire bug dash. And at level three, you can almost keep up with someone who thought a dog would be more useful than a cat. Finally, affinity is this game's term for critical rate and a good way to increase it is by using affinity sliding and finding a slope to briefly slide on for a nifty little affinity boost. In summary, the longsword is a pretty good weapon with plenty of room for damage and enough frustration from all the helm breakers you'll miss to make your family worry about your well-being from all the shouts of rage. Stop moving!